All right, so I wanted to go over my trades for the week, the trades that I closed related to options selling. So total for the week is about 1600 US net US. So this is definitely my best week ever. So that's good news. But bad news is most of my profits came from one stock. So you could see this 495 over here and this 295. So that's 791. That alone came from Fubo. So that would, so that's too much exposure in one stock. Also, it also means it might be hard to repeat. Who's to say Fubo premiums will always be high? So I might not have it every week. So this is definitely my best week, but not sure if I can repeat it. All right, so let me go over my trades one by one. All right, first one here, December 22nd, Sumo naked put 30 strike collected $2. So let's go look at the chart where sumo was trading at december 22nd so december 22nd as you can see here sumo was trading at around 33. i sold the 30 put collected two dollars and ten cents but then sumo dropped all the way down to 28 and then even further all the way down to 25. so my short put came became in the money at some point and i still held on to it didn't do anything knowing that worst case scenario i'm just gonna have to roll it forward extend the trade duration by just rolling it forward and collect the credit by rolling it and just waiting for the stock to eventually recover so the risk is the stock doesn't recover but that was the plan so that's what allowed me to hold on to the trade so expiration was january 15 so it was today and as you could see it closed above 30 it closed at 30.72 and even after hours it dropped to 30.25 but i didn't wait till uh, today I didn't let it expire. I ended up closing it uh, January 14. So I ended up closing it on Thursday. Close it for a dollar. I definitely could have closed it for way better. But I never learn. I always end up closing early. And uh, yeah, I could have let it expire worthless. I would have kept collected the full $2.10. Regardless, I closed it for a dollar. I did one contract. So that gives me $98 net profit after commission. So I held this straight for 23 days capital required for this trade was about a little bit less than a thousand dollars so next december 24th fubo same thing naked put 30 strike so you see here i've got three contracts two dollars each i actually averaged in so i did i think i did two contracts at first and then i did a, a third contract but the average price that i collected was two dollars so let's go look at the chart here for fubo december 24th so that's a wild bank. So Fubo, December 24th, December 24th on the chart here is right over here. So 49, Fubo was at 49. At some point, Fubo was above 60. Then when it dropped to 49, to me, it, it dropped a lot. So I thought it would be a good idea to sell a naked put at 30. I, it's still pretty far, right? Uh, 19 points away. But Fubo kept dropping and dropping and then even went all the way down to 23 at some point. I thought about selling another one. It was trading for around seven dollars. At some point, I was down eight. At some point, I was down fifteen hundred dollars on this trade. Unrecognized loss, of course, unrealized loss. I held on to it. Once again, the plan would be to roll if uh, if breached at expiration. So, it was it had a January fifteen expire. I didn't do anything, and then look at this. Before same same week of expiry, the stock decided to come back up. And I was able to close it at this point here. If we go back to the spreadsheet, I closed it January 13. So I opened it for $2, closed it for 30 cents. Could have let it expire worthless. It would have kept the full $2. But I mean, with three days to go, I felt like I, I don't mind paying 30 cents to confirm the profit of 495. My max profit would have been about 600. I was happy with 495 for sure. So paid 30 cents to close the trade, confirm the net profit of 495. Next trade here is a Zoom put spread, December 24th. This one I definitely closed early again, story of my life, but whatever. So Zoom put spread, December 24th. Let's go look at the chart where Zoom was trading at. So December 24th, so looks like I opened at the same time as Fubo. All right, so Zoom December 24th was, took a drop here, I guess. Not a big one, but enough for me to get in. Not a good uh, not a good entry. So it was trading at 380. So I sold a put spread at 330. So on December 24th, I sold a put spread on Zoom at 330, 325, expiring January 22nd. So for me to win the, on this trade, I need Zoom to stay above 330 by January 22nd. I ended up closing at January 13th. So I, Close it this week. Why? If we look at the chart, January 13, what happened? 
the stock jumped up. In fact, my my put spread was breached at some point. Zoom fell below 330 at some point, but then it jumped back up to January 13 and was trading at 378. So that allowed me to close the put spread for 50 cents. Now the annoying part is the commissions. After commissions, I'm only left with $37. I could have closed it for much less right now. Probably, I think right now it's trading for 20 cents or something. But uh, yeah, I had an order in to close it for 50 cents because at some point it was breached. So when you risk losing on the trade and you have a chance to close it for a profit, you tend to take the profit quickly. So yeah, so that's what happened with Zoom. So that gives me $37 net. And then Amazon put spread January 4th at 2,900, 2,890 strikes. So that take... That's a 10 point wide put spread, so it takes about a thousand dollars of capital minus the premium that I collected. So it took about eight hundred dollars of capital to place the trade. I collected two dollars with a January 29th expiry. January 29th is after earnings, but I collected two dollars. I was able to close it for a dollar 20 this week, might as well confirm 67 dollars of profit. And a good thing I did because Amazon dropped today. So let's look at the chart January 4th on Amazon. And I close it, I think, January 13. So Amazon, January 4th is right over here. Amazon was trading at 31.76. And then I sold the put spread at 2,900. So pretty far away. Amazon dropped, dropped, and dropped. And then January 13, right over here, went up a bit, went back up a bit. I was able to close the trade for a profit, as you could see on, on the spreadsheet here. So that gives me that $67 net profit. So I held for nine days. And then I've got this Beyond Meat put spread that I had, see, 21 days. I held it for 21 days, a bit too long. And profit-wise, it wasn't even worth it. And Beyond Meat got breached. So let's look at the chart here. December 24th, Beyond Meat. I closed it January 14th. All right, so let's go look at the chart here. Beyond Meat, December 24th. So December 24th, yeah, I see. I really did not get a good entry on this one. Uh, Beyond Meat was trading at 136. I sold a 115, 110 put spread. So for me to win on this trade, Beyond Meat needs to stay above 115 by February 19. My expiry was uh, February 19. So it needs to stay above 115. Now look at that. A few days later, it dropped to 131, 128, and then drops to 124. So it's getting closer to my short strike of 115. Then it comes back up again, 127, but not enough for me to close the trade. Then comes back down to 117 and look at this January 11 it broke 115 it went below my short strike of 115 so it went from all the way down from from 137 to 114 almost so that didn't that didn't look good but I held on to it it didn't do anything and a good thing I did as you could see it it shot up afterwards and then I think I closed it on January 14 I said yeah January 14. So at this point here, when it was trading back at 136, where I was initially when I opened the trade, I was able to close the trade for 50%. So I opened it for a dollar two, closed it for 55 cents, $34 net profit. So that's terrible, actually. But I was just happy to get out of the trade. And then I've got Moderna as well. I opened December 22nd, closed January 13. I had a 90 put spread, 90.85 put spread, collected 98 cents, closed it for 44 cents. That's $41 net profit. So let's look at the chart for Moderna. So that didn't do well either. It almost got tested. Didn't breach, but almost got tested. So December 24th, I said. So right over here when Moderna was trading at around 123, I did a put spread at 90.85. All the way to February 19, but then look, it just kept it just kept dropping all the way down to 103. So getting getting closer to my short strike of 90, but then it bounced back up, and then this week I was able to close it for 50% uh, when it was trading at, at around 129. So that gave me a $41 net profit. Wish over here was a naked put. I did two contracts at a 17.5 strike. I opened it December 28. This was not a good entry. I could have gotten a way better entry. But let's look at the chart. So December 28th, yeah. So let's look up Wish over here. So Wish December 28th was right over here. It was trading at $20. I sold a 17.5 strike for February 19. So I think it had like 50 days to go. 
and then look at that wish dropped all the way down to 17 almost i think it broke my it breached my short strike but i held on to it i had done two contracts so it definitely could have gotten a better entry or even better pricing but whatever held on to it and then it came back up and then let's see when i closed i don't remember when i closed it i closed it december i closed it january 12th so i even closed it for a dollar 20 so my entry was bad and my exit was bad but uh, whatever, it was still profitable, $107 net profit because I did two contracts, but I definitely, definitely could have closed it for way better because uh, look where Wish is trading at. It was At some point, it was at 27. Today, it took a big drop, but at some point, it was at 27. Could have closed it for way better. So many of these trades, I could have gotten much more profit, but because I tend to close the trades too early, ended up smaller profits but overall not can't complain on that same day though i did a covered call in my rsp account so that's this line over here i got in i did one contract so i wanted to use the cash that's sitting in my registered account so i decided to do a covered call the same day december 28th got in at a 20 strike so i went at the money i paid seven i paid 16.50 at for the 20 strike i ended up closing it january 14 for 19.38 so I paid sixteen fifty. I sold for nineteen thirty eight. So that gave me two hundred seventy six dollar net profit uh, after commission held for seventeen days. Our next trade here was Zoom, a Zoom put spread. So when Zoom continued dropping, I sold a, another put spread at two ninety two eighty, but for February nineteen expiry. This so I did this December thirtieth, and I closed it January thirteen. So December thirtieth on Zoom. So it. It's gonna be I close it at the same time as the other one. So December 30th over here, you see Zoom dropped to, to 348. So I sold a put spread at 290, and it actually dropped even more after that. But at this point, I sold a put spread at 290 at the February 19 expiry, and I was able to close it over here January 13 when Zoom went up to 378. And actually, let's go see how much I closed it for. So Zoom, I collected $2. I closed it for $1.20. So similar to the Amazon put spread. So that's $67 net profit held for 14 days. So next, I've got January 11. I did a root naked put. Did one contract. 17.5 strike. Collected $1.95. I was able to close it for a dollar in two, two days later. So January 13, I was able to close it for a dollar. That gives me $83 net profit. So let's go look at the chart here for root. And we said January 11, I believe. January 11, January 13. Yeah, okay. So January 11, root was, I guess we could do five days on the chart. So yeah, root was trading at around 18.4. I sold the 17.5 strike for $1.90. 95, $1.95. And then when root went up, at this point january 13 it went from 18 right, from 18 to 24 that obviously helped me close the trade early remember this had a february 19 expiry i was able to close it two days later for almost 50 percent don't have to wait all the way to february 19 and that's how i got the 83 dollars net profit on that trade and then january 4th uh when fubo dropped so let's look at the chart on fubo because that was fubo dropped a lot that was perfect time to to sell premium. So January 4th, I'm gonna have to go one month. Where is January 4th? So yeah, right over here. So at the lowest point, I think this is, at uh, this was a very good entry. So the lowest point, January 4th on Fubo, I decided to sell a covered call at a 20 strike. So this is really at the lowest point and I even went at a 20 strike to make the trade even safer. So I, I paid $16 to get into this trade I did this in my RSP account and I closed it January 14th. So got in January 4th, got out January 14th. So 10 days later, got in for $16, sold for $19.07. So that gives me $295 net profit from this covered call trade. And that's why I was saying that the biggest chunk of my profits come from one stock, which is Fubo. So it was a lot of exposure, but I mean, premiums were so high. It was very interesting, could not uh, resist. And I was actually going to do another contract for $7 on the put side. So it could have been, it could have made even more profit if I just uh, held, held some of these trades longer. And if I just uh, stopped hesitating and sold as soon as I thought of something. So regardless, Total profit for the week, 1600 can't complain. So my overall PL for the month, well for January right now it's sitting at 2000. It's not it's not over, so we're two weeks in. But December was definitely my best month, 2500 US. 
and you could see here September was terrible and I lost $381 for September but overall since I started logging my trades so since July it, this is actually mid July I'm up $8,800 in profits and I just recently started adding my covered call trades from my registered accounts usually I was just logging my margin account trades but now I decided to log my premium selling trades as well. So for this week, actually this all these lines here are my mar is just my margin account trade. So 1031 from, from my margin and then an extra 572 from my registered accounts. So these are my open trades, but I'll talk about them in my uh, weekly uh, quest trade portfolio update video. So I get asked a lot if there's a, if I have a discord where I could share my trades live. I don't mind setting it up, but it's just with working full time during the day might be hard to commit to it, but I am thinking of setting it up. So let me know in the comment section below if you are interested in getting live trades. I would probably start the discord for about maybe $25 a month where I'll as soon as I place a trade or even before I place a trade actually send the trades on the discord explain why I'm sending it. And if you want to copy it as is, I mean, at your own risk, you could see some trades lose some trades win, you could do more contracts than I do. If you don't want to spend time during the day looking for trades, you just want to copy my trades, I, I really don't mind. But obviously, it's going to take some time for me to post everything on the discord and maybe reply to people that are, have questions on how to open the trades and even close them or even manage them if tested. So let me know in the comment section below if you're interested. And it'll give me an idea how many people want to sign up and if it's worth it i just have to figure out the logistics so that i can be fair to everyone and respond to the messages all right if you have any questions leave in the comment section below like always if you can open an account with quest trade to trade on the stock market or sell options use my referral link below to get 50 dollars in free trades if you enjoyed this video click the like button share with a friend and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching